Hey, this is the old gaming geezer. Welcome back to the indeterminate stuff. And you remember from the last time, we are burning out to Elo. And what you're seeing here is my uh, course correction at the ascending node. And I'm slowly trying to get an intercept with Elo as it descends down on its orbit. It's getting close to Jewel. I actually, ac accidentally got a, a Jewel encounter at one point, which was not what I was looking for. But uh, after burning and burning and burning, I finally get my Elu encounter. So we're on our way to Elu. We're getting there. We're moving. Okay, so next, uh, I'm going to take a quick look at, uh, at the fine-tuning the orbit at a later stage, a little bit further on in my, uh, in my home and transfer orbit. So I'm trying to get as close as I can to Elu. You know, try and do it while I'm as far away as possible so I can, uh, you know, lose, use as little fuel as possible. And uh, it looks like I'm going to need quite a close approach there to Elu. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how that's going to go. Uh, I'm just setting up an alarm there, and we're ready to go to Elu. Yes, we are. So Shep and Kerman gets out to have a quick look at the ship. Uh, I know this is uh, getting a bit of a cliche now, but he's going to do it anyway. And he's taking a quick inspection of the ship to make sure that everything is okay. And while he's inspecting, he realizes something important. So Shepin is now kind of going, wait, 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 what? Wait a second. And he's looking all over the ship and he's like, what the hell? What's going on? He's, he's, there's, he realizes something, something really important that nobody else has realized at this point. And of course, it's way too late at this point to do anything about it. Uh, but he doesn't know how to, how to break this to the guy. So he decides, well, you know, Obser, Bilgen, I need you boys to come out here for a second because you really need to check this out. Uh, and of course, uh, Obser and Bilgen are inside. They're like, really? Okay, so, all right, we're out, we're out. What are we looking at here? Come out here and look at this. <sighs> Can you spot it yet? Have you spotted it yet? So Obser comes out now, and they're coming over to have a look. Have you spotted it yet, guys? Come on, you can do it. You could, you could see it. Come on. Come on, guys. Can you see it yet? Anybody? Anybody? There's, there's three out there. Check it out. Shepard knows. What about the other two? Yeah? That's right. There is no solar panels on the lander, the Elu lander. Not one solar panel on the Elu lander. What the hell, guys? I mean, what the hell? <sighs> Obser, you're supposed to be one of the boys from the lab. God damn it. So meanwhile, Bill, Jeb, and Bob are on their way out to Duna. And here they are coming along to their mid-course correction. Uh, just a quick uh, quick little burn just to get them a little bit closer to Duna. I'm going to try and get them as close as I can. Uh, maybe even close enough so I can go straight into aero braking from this far out. Um, and I'm doing this to, to, to save as much fuel as I can. Uh, and when I get in this close, I switch to RCS and I'm slowly adjusting uh, my closest approach to Duna. To get it right down, uh, I got it to about, um, I don't know, about 20,000 uh, meters eventually. But uh, it's quite difficult to do. As you can see, it's wobbling around like crazy because we're still so far out. But eventually we get close enough. I get close enough that I'm happy about 25, 20, 25,000 uh, meters above the surface of Duna. And so as we approach, we're getting up to the, to the orbit of Duna, the red planet. The ancient Kerman god of war, Duna himself. Yeah, okay, that's crap. But anyway, what the hell? They're getting close now. We're getting close to Duna, and I think we're going to take a quick... Uh, we're going, slowing right down to go through our sphere of influence. There, my alarm clock came up to tell me that we're about to enter our Duna sphere of influence. Now, when you're going to change... Uh, for the sphere of influence of one celestial body to another in KSP, you really want to jump out of uh, time acceleration and go back to normal time because when this happens, it's it sort of uh, something funny happens to the game. It kind of breaks it up a little bit. So here we are inside with uh, the boys getting a quick look so you can get a look at Duna from inside the ship. This is the first time our boys have seen the red planet with the naked eye. We're just rotating the ship so we can see it. There's the sun. Kerbal. There it is. Duna. Okay, we went a bit too fast. So we're going back. We're trying to go back. Uh, these boys aren't very good pilots. <laughs> All right, so there it is. There's Duna. 
This is the boys' first view of Duna. Bill, Bob, and Jeb. They've been flying for days. What am I saying, days? They've been flying for a couple of hundred days, and there it is, is Duna, with the little Ike um, orbiting around Duna. Beautiful. The red planet. The red planet of rage. Rage! <laughs> so, I think the boys are pretty excited. I know I am. But they know that they're going to have to arrow break when they get in there. So arrow breaking around Duna. Arrow breaking is something that's only been done in the Kimberl Space Program once before by a ship by uh, the Science Orium when it was coming back from Minmus. It did a little bit of an arrow breaking to slow itself down when it came back to Kerbin. Well, that was in Kerbin orbit. Now we're millions of miles away in Duna orbit. If anything goes wrong... These guys are screwed. But we're coming in now. The boys are preparing, getting ready to drop low into the thin atmosphere of Duna. Duna's got a very low uh, low pressure, barometric pressure, so we've got to get down to about uh, 12,000 12, kilometers above the surface to do our aero braking. And that is hair raising, I must say. Yes, it certainly is. Well, we changed our altitude uh, off camera there, adjusted my my uh, lowest point in my in my flyby uh, to about twelve thousand meters because I was just going in a little bit too high there. I had it at about twenty or twenty-five. I actually don't remember what it was at, but now it's at about twelve, and we're coming down low. We're dropping down. We're about seventeen thousand meters above the surface now. We are well in the atmosphere, and we're beginning to slow down. I think. I can't really make it out on the uh, on the preview window, but I think we're beginning to slow down. Uh, try and do as much science as I can while I am high in the atmosphere over Duna. I need that science. I need to unlock some new stuff for my space program. So now we're dropping down, and there is our orbit. We are now officially captured by Duna, and we are starting to rise again. I think we can safely say that that is a successful aero capture. Brilliant. We dropped down into the atmosphere. Friction with the air slowed us down and popped us out the other side into a nice, not so, uh, you know, slightly eccentric orbit. Eventually, my orbit was quite, quite circular when I got out there, and I only had to do a quick little burn just to get the other side out of the atmosphere. It worked out really well. It was, uh, it was a, it's a, that was a textbook piece of aero capture, I must say. Bill, Jeb, and Bob, they're the boys that you send on a mission when it's got to be done right first time. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we're trying to get as much size as we can in uh, Kerbin, in Duna, sorry, in Duna's atmosphere. Uh, but now we're, we're rising out of it again, and uh, I'm just checking just checking what I've got. Uh, and there it is. It's beautiful. It's coming up out of the atmosphere. We are safe. Safely in Duna orbit. And we are looking, looking really sweet. You're looking good, Dunopolis One. You certainly are. <laughs> what a nice ship. What a nice ship with its two landers. Very good, very good, very good. Speaking of the two landers, we need to do a little bit of uh, parking uh, organization. We need to get the Ike lander off the top of this, and we need to bring it around and, and, uh, and get it onto the back of the transfer ship, the Dunopolis. This is the Ike lander here, and we're... Uh, we're just backing it away a little bit. Now, the Ike Lander has no RCS. we got to switch back to the Dunopolis and spin that around. And uh, then we're going to switch back to the Ike Lander and just fire it forward to uh, get it to dock onto the back. Lovely. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I set the... Uh, I just set the target of the docking port there just so I can line it up right. And now we're going to switch, switch back now and we're activating the engine and firing forward. Went a little bit fast there, but, you know... We managed to dock. Nothing was damaged. All is okay. All is good. All We're all happy. We're all happy. So I get Jeb out and uh, bring him back over to the Dunopolis 1. Perfect. That was... Uh, I'm going to take a quick look at the ship while we're out here, I suppose, seeing as uh, that's what we do. Beautiful, beautiful with the sun shining behind the wonder of the Dunopolis 1. This miracle of modern technology sending our Kerbals out into distant interplanetary space yes yes and so next now we've got to prepare for landing 
landing on the red, dusty surface of Duna. But before we get to the red, dusty surface of Duna, yeah, enough. Uh, we need to check the ship, and we notice uh, while doing some quick. Uh, pre-landing checks, that we've been burning fuel, we've been siphoning fuel out of the Eichlander and the Duna Lander. The Eichlander is completely empty, so we quickly refill the Eichlander. Uh, we also took a little bit of fuel out of the Duna Lander. I just, I forgot to uh, to disable crossfeed. Now you notice there, I uh, deactivated the fuel tank on the Ike Lander, so it has no power, so it, fuel cannot be pumped out of that tank. Remember that for later. So we're checking out, everything is looking good, and so now we gotta decide. Well, we gotta transmit, so we decided to transmit some of the data, but now we have to decide who is gonna land on Duna. Well, it's a case of who hasn't gone on many missions, and it's Bob. Bob, who's one of the founders of the Kerbal Space Program, he has never, he has only been on six missions. Jeb has been on like 15. Uh, Bill has been on like I don't know, 12. Bob is the guy. Bob is going to hit Duna. He's going to hit it hard. Like a true Kerbal hero. Yes, he is. So in he gets. He's ready to go. Ship is looking good. We're going to choose our landing site. But first, he's going to do a few little minor housekeeping things. We're going to orient the ship in the north-south direction so that when we come back, we can dock pretty easily. Uh, making sure that it's all good. I'm going to... Uh, get rid of that ladder which is on the front of the ship because when I was putting this thing together and the VAB some bloody engineer decided that that it needed to have two ladders in perfect symmetry one on each side of course one is uh, pointing at the right at the, the hatch on the back Ooh, update the flight software do you remember to do that I don't know did, did what what do we close the hatch I think we close the hatch Okay, okay, pre-flight checklist, uh, get permission to use the ship. Mm-hmm. Turn off the oven. Mm-hmm. Check for... You know what? For, forget the pre-flight check. We're cool, we're cool, we're cool, we're cool. Somebody call my mom and ask her to turn off my oven. It's probably too late now. We've been out here for like 200 days. All right, so I think we're ready to go. Ovens or not? Okay, so let's detach this mother. Detaching now. Activating RCS. Thrusting, thrusting away from the mothership. And we're looking good. Okay, Bob, how do you feel? How do you feel about being the first Kerbal to land on Duna? Feeling good. Jeb and Bill are taking a look at the ship, uh, slowly inching away from the Dunopolis one. Excellent. Looks beautiful. If only they could see it out those little crappy little front portholes. Well, it doesn't matter. Bob is ready to go. He's doing his, uh, getting ready to do his burn to, uh, to deorbit, and here he goes. Bang! Deorbit burn! Just a quick deorbit, I'm going to, uh, just a quick burn, should I say, to deorbit, because, you know, the gravity around Duna is pretty low. So here we go, we're coming down, we're gonna, gonna try and land in that crater over there, that little crater on the equator. So, looking good. Now, any minute now, we're going to have uh, a little sun coming up over the surface of Duna. We're going to have our Duna sunrise. There we are, the sun peeking over the horizon, lighting our way to glory, fortune and glory, fame, chicks. That's it, chicks. Woo! <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Enough of that, enough of that. Okay, so uh, Bob starts to spin the ship for some bizarre reason, probably to get his nav ball facing the right way. But that's just the way it is. Okay, so we have got our... Um, Umbrellas, I was going to say, our parachutes. We got our parachutes already set up to open. Uh, the two radial mounted parachutes on the command pod are going to open. Well, they're all going to. They're going to. They're going to completely fill um, at about 2,000 meters. And the other four on the top of the side boosters are going to fill at. Uh, at 1,000 meters above the surface. But they're all going to deploy together. They're all going to deploy pretty soon. Um, there we go, we're all deployed, but now watch out, because the two on their own, the shorter ones, they will, they will fill with air much sooner than the, than the four at the back. So we're slowing down, as you can see, there's no re-entry effects, uh, on Duna, because we just weren't going fast enough for it to happen. Now, if we came in at a really, really steep, uh, trajectory at a lot of speed, 
we would we would have we would have had some re-entry effects, but we weren't going fast enough this time. So now we are slowing down. Now to land on Duna, you need parachutes. Well, you don't, but if you have parachutes, you really want to get some thrust as well because Duna, the air is so thin on Duna. The parachutes will only slow you down, and it won't slow you down enough to land. So here I am, thrusting, slowing myself down to try and get on the surface. And I kind of messed this up here, kind of messed this up, but I get down, uh, a little bit of a bumpy landing. I'm sure uh, Bob's neck is a little bit sore, but it's okay. It's okay. He's all right. So we're down. We're down on the surface of Duna. First Kerbal on Duna. Bob is a Kerbal hero, just like our boys from last episode. He's a true Kerbal hero. So now he's got the ribbons for being the first, first Kerbal to land on Duna. He's feeling great. He's feeling great. He's really cool that, you know, that, 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 uh, that Jeb didn't get this. Because Jeb's got the first ribbons for flipping everything. <laughs> so, uh, fast forwarding here to four times time acceleration. I'm going to do all my science. Um, going to, you know, we don't need to see this all in great detail. Trying to get everything goo, uh, gravioli, uh, materials bay. Everything. Uh, temperature, bar barometric pressure, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and this just takes time. So, and, and uh, Bob gets out and he's going to collect all this data. He's going to pack the shoots just in case. But he's going to take all this, uh, all the data from all of our, um, all of our experiment base. And he's going to pop them back into the storage compartments in the command pod. Meanwhile, he's going to go out. He's going to have a look around. Yay! Going to some surface samples, some EVA reports, and he's going to plant a flag. And so to commemorate this uh, wonderful moment of Bob being the first one on the moon, on, on Duna, whoops. So Bob, on the surface of Duna, yeah. <laughs> Suck it, Jeb. <laughs> Jeb is not the first Kerbal to go onto the surface of Duna. No, he's not. It is Bob. So Bob is having a look around. He's, he's running across the surface of Duna, feeling great that he's on another planet. It's time to do maybe a little bit more science here, but not the kind of science that we've got the instrumentation for. We need to do uh, maybe a bit of gravity science, I think. Test the, the you know, test, test exactly how strong the gravity is. And there we go. We get a good jump. Good, nice high jump. Well, that's great. Bob is having a good time. So as Bob returns to the lander, choose another jump there. And face plants into the ground. Oh, Bob, you big geezer. Jeb wouldn't have done that. Well, this is the old gaming geezer. I'm going to sign off now. Good night. Farewell. Avita Zane adieu. If you like this video, please hit like below. If you really like this video, please hit subscribe. Thank you very much. Goodbye.